you've seen me absolutely and how back no uh, offense to me, and i mean this in all loving way but i do remember a time maybe about 10 years ago where having a talk with uh, ari ari and i and were talking and we were really really pretty positive that we were going to lose you we were I, there was a point in time about 10 years about a couple years before you go no mas i'm done i'm done no, i knew i was losing or we're I like knew. man oh man when i knew it i the, 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 the again the worst thing that happened it's not the worst thing that happened yeah it's what my mind did with it was the longest yard and the results yeah the results were not what i wanted them to be so uh it uh, drove me, it made me angry. Mm. It made me a lot of things. And there was money, so I could snort at disposal. Mm -hmm. And there was one time I didn't think I was going to make it. Let's, mm. let's be honest with each other. Yeah, sure. I mean, I was, you know, when you're 400 pounds, you can't breathe up the stairs, and you're doing blow and smoking three, four packs of cigarettes. Your skin color is non-existent there's mm -hmm. not even blood going through your veins there's no circulation it was just a matter of time so i'm very fortunate man. so like when you're having that feeling and you're you're thinking you're not going to make it and you're you're still doing coke like you're still at the, like later that night just doing coke do you just not care if you live or die like what is that like it's a very surreal feeling when listen man in a micro sense it's like, you know, McDonald's is feeding you somebody's fucking cat, but we still go in there. You and I both know that right. if you smoke enough cigarettes, you will get cancer, but we still do that. There are so many things that we know as human beings that are bad for us, but we shrug them off. Mm. Like, it's not going to be me. I'm never going to be that guy with the fucking organ in my throat because I smoked 80 fucking cigarettes, you mm -hmm. know? It's weird. It was a weird situation knowing that I had nothing left. Like, I was just fading away to this drug because I was losing to it. Mm. And then I watched the movie Ray. Mm -hmm. And I saw that he quit drugs at 64. And I said, there is no fucking way I'm going to do this till the end. Mm. There is no fucking way that, that, that this has to stop. And then I read that John Gotti had taken over the Gambinos at the age of 45. Mm. And I was 44. Wow. It was 2007. So I was about to be 45. And I figured for me to take over my world, I'm going to have to do this sober. Mm. If I want to be not a gangster, I don't want, if I want to have that much control of my life, I have to stop doing drugs, mm -hmm. you know? When you would call me and go, Joey, what are we doing tomorrow at 12? Yeah, we're going to write the script. As I was talking to you, I knew that you might get a call at 10 saying I had the flu. Yeah. Four weeks in a row. Right, right, right. I didn't, you know, Lee and I always talk about how lucky we are. We started this podcast at 6 in the morning the first two years. Mm. If I was doing blow, this podcast would have lasted three weeks. Oh, sure. Any project. Three weeks. I remember uh, uh, my father died twice. I had a job where my in a three-year window, my father died twice. Where they're like, didn't your dad already die? You know, just one of my excuses. They're like, I thought your dad died like two and a half years ago. I'm talking to my dad in fucking 35 years. But hungover, just don't want to go into work. I'm like, yeah, I can't be there for a couple of days. My dad died. I got to go back to the funeral, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, of course. Whatever you need. Take your time. Blah, blah, blah. Don't worry. C cut to three years later. I'm hungover, coked out, fucking fucked up again. Call the same job. I'm like, hey, I can't come in. My just found out my father died. They're like, I thought your father died three years ago. <laughs> That's how much you don't give a fuck. I had a friend, Glenn Conti, that worked for UPS when we were growing up. And every Friday, he would call and say his grandmother died. And one day, they pulled him in the back room. They go, listen, man. We've uh, investigated different scenarios, and nobody has met has as many grandmothers as you. Yeah, you've got thirteen grandmothers, <laughs> and all past, of them are dead, and all of them are fucking all dead. Are dead. <laughs> it's. I, I still remember the last year, that how I would cancel gigs that morning. You know what that's like. Mm. You know what that's like to go home. Road gigs. You cancel road gigs. Road saying, gigs. Oh, jeez. That's a death sentence. How long do you know me? I mean, Lee, I'm leaving at 8 in the morning. The cab's picking me up at 6.30. I'll be in Houston by fucking 12. Beautiful weekend. 
That night I go to the store. Like, let me go to a spot. Listen, and now I would never leave the night before. I'd have to do comedy. Oh, yeah. But that was my little test. Let me go to a spot. Sure. And on the way back, ah, what's a 20? That's it. And I'd call him, and he'd go, I don't have no 20s right now. I just got a 60 or a half eight ball. Ain't that always the case? You know what? Give me the half eight ball because the 60, I'll save it. I'll leave it there for the, in the apartment for when I come back from Houston. Next thing you know, it's 545. The Coke has been gone for three hours. I'm barely holding on. I can't even leave the fucking kitchen because I see shadows in the living room and we live in the studio apartment. So check that out. I would sit there and right. look under the door. You see that door jam? I right. would just lay on the floor and look under the door jam, praying that Terry wouldn't come out and see me. What about the night I locked the cat out? I locked the cat. I locked Finney outside. No, I don't think I know that story. And he kept knocking on the door, and I thought it was the cops. So I went to bed and put the sleep apnea mask on, uh -huh. and just laid there going, "When are they going to kick the fucking door in?" And finally, at five, when the shit wore off, I went back to the door, and who's out there? Finney sweating. Like, what the fuck's going on? What the fuck is wrong with you? You left me out here for three hours, you what? fuck. <laughs> yeah. I thought we were friends, motherfucker. Like, I was doing that type of shit at the end. I had canceled Beaumont, Houston. Sacramento, I went up there and couldn't get coke on a Thursday night. Guess what do you think I did on a Friday morning? Yeah. I had a mystery audition. Bounce. I go back to LA. No, you didn't. Yes, I did.